Hello again, uh, dear student. Uh, hope that you are safe and healthy. So we are going uh, to finish what we left off uh, uh, with the, the conducting system. So here we are going to talk about the part two of this uh, big chapter of the heart, and we are going to talk about the entrance uh, system of the heart and basically how the heart allows the contractions on its own. Um, the conducting system is, uh, we are going to jump to the slide where we left off. So the conduction system um, is a, a network of, uh, of non-contracting cells and conducting cells. So um, it's, the, the, it coordinates the heartbeat. And the heartbeat is a function of the presence of the gap junctions. If you remember the, the, the cardiac muscles, we have those gap junctions uh, that uh, the, uh, allow the transmission or facilitate the transmission of the action potential from one cell to another. Uh, they have those also those specialized, as I said, cardiac uh, muscles that initiate and distribute the impulse from one uh, region to another um, that uh, stimulate uh, the contractions. There are two types of uh, myocardiac cells, uh, conducting system that controls and uh, coordinate uh, the heartbeat, and the contractive cells that produce contractions that propel the blood do not they, they, those, they, they do not need um, the nervous system stimulations. The conditions, uh, it's um, similar actually to the action potential that we see in, uh, in the neural uh, system during the uh, anatomy physiology 24-1. When single contractions of the heart and all the cardiomyocytes my, uh, contract as a unit, uh, the entire uh, heart contract uh, con, uh, con, adds in series, first the atria, then uh, the ventricles. And the way that um, the conducting uh, system uh, work is that uh, the intrinsic conducting system work is that uh, it's began with an action potential at um, uh, sinoatrial node uh, and transmitted through the conducting system produce an action potential in the cardiac muscle and uh, and this we can actually uh, detect those event this electric event uh, using an electrocardiogram that we will uh, talk about it uh, just a little uh, shortly. So, um, the, as I said, the way that this intrinsic contacting uh, system work is that it began with an action potential at the pacemaker, more specifically uh, at what we call a sinoatrial knob. So let's talk a little bit about this action potential that has been generated by uh, pacemaker cells. Uh, the, uh, the cardiac uh, pacemaker have an unstable resting uh, membrane potential, MPA, membrane potential actions. They are, um, they are uh, uh, three uh, phases, uh, three parts of this action potential. Uh, the pacemaker uh, that is triggering the potassium channels, um, and they are one that is uh, the pacemaker potential uh, channels, uh, and one uh, they are uh, triggering the sodium channels, and another one triggering the calcium uh, channels. So uh, the, the potential during the first part of the action potential, the, poton the potassium channels are closed. Uh, let's let's forget that. Let's stop here uh, just a little bit. Um, let me talk to you about how the membranes are. Um, the membrane I always call it since I was a student myself. 
I always call it as a salted banana because it have a lot of potassium in inside in the intracellular fluid, but they have a lot of sodium in the extracellular fluid. So this is the resting potential of the membrane, all right? So um, when uh, depolarizations happen, uh, depolarization happen how by an influence of the sodium, huge influence of the sodium uh, inside of the intracellular uh, fluid or space. This will cause a depolarization. So they're in the first stage. Uh, they are, the potassium channels, as I said, is closed. Uh, the, but the slow sodium channels are open, causing an interior to become more positive because potassium is positively charged, right? So it's going to increase uh, the uh, potential, uh, the, the intracellular space to become more uh, positive. And once they reach out the, during this depolarization, uh, around uh, we see around the uh, plus 30 millivolt uh, no first around minus 40 millivolts sorry they have um, calcium channels will open and when this calcium channels is open it's become like a positive uh, feedback more he is going to trigger a more uh, calcium to came in and this will arise the phase of the action potential. This is when it's going to reach plus 30 millivolt. So the inflow of the calcium from the extracellular fluid will trigger more a calcium inside and from where this extracellular calcium, uh, uh, from where this uh, calcium is coming, is coming in, in, from the uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum it has from this uh, source where it's going to be released so this depolarization uh, caused by the sodium is going to open the slow uh, calcium channels so the extracellular calcium channels coming from the ecf to the uh, icf which is the intracellular fluid causing like a positive feedback is going to stimulate the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release more calcium and this release uh, more calcium it will increase um, the potential action potential uh, at plus 30 millivolt or at plus 30 millivolt the sodium channels will close but the slow calcium channels remain open prolongating the depolarization as we can see as a plateau that i will show you that and this is very important this plateau i will explain it to you shortly just be patient with me and then after that the third phase of the uh, action potential is uh, repolarization uh, by the way this um, uh, calcium this is uh, slightly exactly the same as i said happening uh, during the neural system action potential but uh, quite different because during the neural system action potential we don't have this a, a extracellular calcium that is came in uh, releasing uh, calcium from the sr we don't have that the calcium really is released only from the sr okay so then after that we have the phase three which is repo Larizations after um, a short period, after 200 milliseconds, slow calcium channels are closed and the voltage gated potassium channels are open, allowing the efflu of the potassium and cells become more negative. We, they are getting repolarizing the cells to the resting membrane potential. The calcium is a pump. Uh, both back into the ESR and also outside of the, uh, the cells into the extracellular fluid. All right. I really uh, want you to look at this in general. I'm, I am really explaining it a really in general and very, very easy way. All right. Um, So um, this is this is exactly. Let's uh, look at it in this diagram. We have the three phases of the action potential, the cardiac action potential. 
of the muscle, cardiac muscle. So we have uh, at minus uh, 90 millivolt, this is resting membrane potential. Sodium and the calcium channels are uh, unclosed, right? And then after, uh, I mean, a stimulus arriving to the SA, atrial depolarization uh, have rapid entry of the sodium that will came inside, you see it, it will came inside it, the intracellular uh, space. That's the intracellular space, that's the extracellular space, and that's between it's the membrane, okay? And then after that, when he reach uh, around um, uh, minus 40 volt, it will uh, calcium channel, extracellular calcium will came inside, but once it reach plus 30 millivolt, it will stimulate the secretion of calcium from the SR. So this is, and this is very long, longer period. And we will, uh, this is what, uh, this is what will be represented by the plateau. As we can see over here, uh, this is the inflow of the calcium through the uh, calcium channels that is uh, uh, entering more calcium, actually entering uh, the uh, remain open making more calcium coming in, prolongating the depolarization, as we can see, as a plateau. This about 200 uh, millivolts, uh, 200 milliseconds. After 200 millisecond, um, uh, rapid depolarizations, a rapid polarization is caused by um, The effluve of the, the potassium and cell become more neg negative, repolarizing to um, to the membrane to the membrane to return to the resin uh, potential. And during this um, period, the calcium channels is closed. And the potassium still open until he reached the the resting membrane potential. This is this plateau. This plateau um, represents what we call uh, absolute between uh, absolute uh, refract, uh, refract, uh, refractory period. Sorry. A refractory period, which is the interval during, um, uh, between uh, the stimulus and then when all the calcium uh, um, voltage channels stay open. So that represents the plateau of the calcium. So this is the refractory period. Action potential cannot be initiated no matter how large the stimulus is applied. And this uh, um, say almost like uh, 200 uh, millisecond, as you can see here, after 200 millisecond, repolarization starts until you reach the resting um, uh, membrane uh, potentials again. And this longer uh, refractory period, it's very uh, good actually, it's very benefic because it prevents uh, tetanic contractions, and also sustain the, the contractions. Uh, it sustains um, to um, ensure that we have efficient ejections of the blood from the ventricle via the systemic and the pulmonary uh, circuit. So to make sure that the, 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 the heart is make uh, not only contracting, but also his uh, playing his uh, normal job as a pump for the blood. Okay, so let's talk about the specialized um, uh, cells, the sinoatrial uh, atrial node that exists in the um, uh, wall of the right atrium. And then um, the junction between the atrium and the ventricle, we have uh, the atrioventricular node 
those are uh, the pacemakers. Uh, and then after that, uh, the uh, parcels of this conducting and transect conducting uh, system, we have also the conducting cells. Those are the SA and the AV node are the specialized contracting cells. And then the conducting cells, they exist through the main uh, cardiogram. Uh, very specially, we have uh, uh, the internodal uh, conducting uh, cells that exist between the SA node and AV node. And we have also the that exists most, mostly in the atrium, right? Uh, between the two nodes. And also we have the in the ventricle, we have two um, conducting uh, cells. We have the atrioventricular bundles, atrioventricular bundles that exist in the septums that separate the both ventricles. And also we have bundle branches that they are left and right bundle branches. The heart, uh, um, the SA node generates uh, eight, 80 to 100 action potential. It generates more action potential actually than the AV node. And uh, the AV node generates 40 to 60 action potential per minute. And of course, uh, I mean, we have the autonomic um, uh, system that um, can influence this, uh, uh, this heart rate. The parasympathetic uh, stimulation slow the heartbeat, while the sympathetic increase uh, the heart or the heart. Okay. The cardiac cycle began with an action potential, as we can, as we we just explained it at the SA node, and transmitted uh, uh, through the conducting system, uh, produce action potential in cardiac muscles. Resting potential for the ventricles the cells are around minus 90 millivolts and the atriums it's about minus 80 uh, volt. So this is just um, uh, the PKNG once um, the, the stimulus reach the uh, PKNG fibers that they are going to distribute the stimulus to the contract uh, distribute to the contractile cells that is uh, uh, mostly made up of the muscles, the rest of the heart, the muscles in, in the uh, heart. So let's look at the um, pulse conditions through the heart. In step one, as I said, they are uh, as a node activity and the uh, atrial activations begin. All right, um, the SA node contains the pisma. Uh, markers and they are connected to the AV node to the internodal pathway. So um, atrial activations uh, start as a step one of this uh, conductions, but it's not going to reach the AV node uh, as soon as you reach the SA node. You have a little delay. Um, this little delay uh, is very simple to understand because you have to raise the right atrium. You have to reach the a left atrium first and once both atriums are being um, uh, contracted this is when he's going to uh, reach the uh, atrioventricular node that exists in the floor uh, of the right atrium uh, in another word it exists uh, between the atrium right atrium and the right uh, ventricles uh, they are daily of the impulse. Um, this is because you have to reach from the SA node to the AV node. They have a, a little delay, and this is um, because you have to reach the left atrium. So the atrial contractions, once it reach both atrium, um, SA node, both atrium, the atrial contractions uh, begin. Begins. Um, so. Um, here you go. Both um, atrium now uh, are contracting. They are reaching uh, uh, after 100 milliseconds. They reach the AV node, right? They reach the AV node, 
And then after that, um, from the AV node, uh, I, I love to look at this by the by pictures. After the AV node, they reach to um, intraventricular bundles, and then um, the ventricular bundles they go to the right and the left bundles, all right, reaching uh, the Purkinje fibers, and when via the um, moderator band. Um, band so they are going to reach those PKNG fibers. Um, the uh, elapsed time is about 175 milliseconds. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, then they will reach after those um, uh, right and left uh, bundles branches. They are going to uh, reach the PKNG fibers. And those PKNG fibers, they are going to distribute the, the, the ampoules to the ventricles. And uh, atrial contractions at this point stop completely. They are complete. And the ventricular contractions start after uh, 225 milliseconds after the first start from the SA uh, node. So um, in So in general, the SA node send the impulse arrive at the SA node. The SA node send it to the EV node. There are a delay over here because the SA node uh, have to send, uh, uh, have to wait for the left atom also to get contracted. AV node then AV node, AV bundle node, the branches, the bundle uh, branches uh, left and right, and then the pick and G fibers, then the ventricular contractions. A start. So, how we can looking at the heart? How we can look at the heart um, if he's working normally? How to measure the heart and see if it's working and um, beating normally or abnormally? We use a device that we call an electrocardiogram uh, that um, that can detect electrical current um, electrical current uh, event in the cardiac cycle. Uh, we call that ECG, or uh, that we give us a graphic actually, uh, that uh, we call it ECG or EKG. And all the, and uh, you have to understand that all the action potential are all uh, begin with an action potential or all uh, at given time, not only at single. Uh, action uh, potential and uh, how we can detect those events that uh, do all the action potential they are given at one uh, not only at single action potential is going to detect this electrocardiogram it detects all the action potential that happen in, in the heart uh, at a given time not only one single action potential this is what i try to explain and uh, and uh, the, how we can detect or record those uh, electrical events by the doctor will place an electro uh, electrode uh, at the special places uh, in your chest and it will record electrical events and following that it will uh, see if the heart is working normally or abnormally so um this is some quiz. So, for example, if it's not working abnormally, this is the ECG. You can show some bradycardia, which is uh, abnormal slow heart beat, or trachycardia, abnormal heart beat, uh, and we'll take it from there. So, uh, let's see how the ECG, we can read the ECG. There are the features of the ECG that we can read um, uh, on their diagram. We show um, uh, P wave, wave correspond to the atrial depolarizations. We have QRS complex, which is the ventricle depolarizations. And uh, we have, I, I love to see it in a picture. So this is a, a graph. This is a, how we obtain from an electrocardiogram is this graph. So the P is show a wave. And we have a P wave 
that correspond to the atrial depolarization and QRS wave that correspond to the ventricle depolarization and the atrial repolarization and the T wave that correspond to the uh, ventricle repolarizations. And the PR is the interval of, from the start of the atrial depolarizations to the start of the QRS uh, complex or the ventricle depolarizations. And uh, we have the QT. The QT is from the ventricle depolarization to the ventricular repolarizations. And we have the ST uh, interval, which is the entire uh, ventricular myocardiogram uh, depolarization. This is a normal ECG. This is a normal ECG that show um, a normal uh, reading or proper, for, uh, um, proper uh, wave uh, for level for each of this and um, those ECG um, can tell me over here that this is a normal heartbeat this is properly working the heart functional pro uh, properly and producing an action potassium at, as it should be and between uh, normally as it should be and circulating the blood as it should be so um, when it, it can show me uh, some abnormalities, for example, uh, here, uh, um, showing here, for example, uh, fibrillations showing completely disorganized. We, we don't have any pattern. We lost this pattern, P, Q, R, S wave, T wave. We lost it. And sometimes the T wave um, just uh, happened uh, Soundly, so this is a premature ventricular contraction. So following the ECG, we can tell if it's the rhythmic uh, cardiac cycle. Is it normal? Is it pumping the blood normal? Is it conducting uh, the conduction system? Is it normal? Uh, contracting normal? All this from the ECG. So in general, um, the cardiac cycle is the period between the start of the heartbeat and the beginning of the next, right? The blood flow there in one complete heartbeat. And this include a contraction, which is, uh, we call that systole, and relaxation, diastole. Atrial systole and diastole are followed by ventricular systole and diastole. I represent series of pressure and blood volume change and mechanical uh, event follow electrical event seen as we seen in, on the ECG. So the cardiac... Um, so let's look at this um, very... Uh, this uh, mechanical, um, more specifically, more uh, specifically, let's get started and see how more mechanical, those mechanical, those electrical events that happen that we we seen on the ECG, how they are reflected mechanically in the in the term of contractions, relaxations, systole versus diastole. So this is are the phases of the cardiac cycle: atrial systole, atrial diastole, ventricular systole, ventricular diastole. So let's get started about those mechanical uh, events of the cardiac cycle. So the atrial systole began, right? Began, uh, that means depolarization trick, uh, triggers the atrial systole, which is the P wave, right? Right and left antra, and uh, atrial ventricular valves are open. All right, uh, for those atrial contractions force a, a small, I mean, uh, in a relaxing, 80% of the blood is circulating passively from the atrium to the ventricle. But when the atrial um, depolarize, it forces 20% uh, what is left of the additional blood into the relaxed uh, uh, ventricles, all right? And the uh, atria eject the blood into the ventricle, fill in the ventricle, 
<coughs> excuse me. And this, um, when the ventricles are filled, this is what the, 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 uh, the, the push the atrioventricular valve to be closed. The, the ventricle now contain the maximum blood volume, known as what we call end diastolic volume, that is at the end of atrial um, diastole, EDV. Depolarization, when the atrial systole and atrial diastole began, right? And this will spread depolarizations to the ventricle, causing the KRS wave. So this mechanical problem will, is the one that we are going to see as electrical in the ECG as QRS wave. The atria then finish contracting and return to the astel, relaxing, while the ventricle begin, begins uh, the uh, systole phase. So during the fistol, systole uh, phase, we have this first phase. So following the ventricle, um, repolarization, which is the T wave, the ventricle relax, right? And the systolic volume, the blood remain in each ventricle after the systole. The ventricle pressure will drop, causing the black flow of the blood from the aorta and the pulmonary trunk trigger, closing the semi lunar valves. The ventricle are completely closed chamber, but momentarily, all right? This is referred to an easy volumetric relaxing phase. The ventricular contractions push the, uh, atri um, as I said, the atrioventricular valves to be closed, but does not create enough pressure to open the similar valves. And during this pressure, this in this period, this is what we has what we call azyl volumetric relaxation phase. This is momentarily the ventricle is going to be a closed chamber. The AV valve are closed, and the pressure is not enough to open the SL valve. So the ventricle are uh, momentarily uh, completely closed chambers creating what we call the isovolumetric relaxation phase, all right? As the ventricles um, pressure, arises, it will exceed the pressure in the arteries. And once it exceeds the pressure in the arteries, the S semilunar valve, the SL valves will open and the blood is ejected. So this will allow the blood to leave the ventricle. The amount of the blood ejected is called what the stroke SV volume, right? Then the ventricle pressure is getting down. Semiliminar valves are going to be closed. And what is left now in the ventricle, this is what we call the end of systolic volume, which is almost 40% of the end of diastolic volume that they got before. All right. As the ventricle relax, the pressure in the ventricle drops. The blood flow back against the the caps, the uh, the, the the similar valve, and force them to close. The blood flow into the relaxed atrium. 
because the atraventral valves are going to be open and passive atrial filling and the system will restart again. The cardiac cycle, um, it uh, depend, of course, the heartbeat depend on several factors. Um, I mean, they depend on the age, they depend on the, on the gender, they depend on if you are uh, sportive or not, on the body temperature. Uh, usually 75% beat per minute cardiac cycle lasts uh, about 100 uh, millisecond. All the phases, if with the heartbeat is increased, all the phases of the cardiac cycle shorten, particularly the diastole, which is the diastole is the relaxation part, all right? The systole is the one that is the contractions apart. So uh, we can uh, measure um, those, um, we can uh, hear actually, uh, uh, sound uh, by placing a stick, uh, stethoscope uh, for uh, different sound uh, pursued by the individual valves. So when those valves open or close, they uh, produce a uh, sound. So we have uh, four uh, hard sound. We have SA. Uh, sound that is loud sound produced by atrioventricular sound and we have an S2 sound that is loud sound also it produced by the semiliminar bond so S1 and S2 correspond to the valve uh, sound and we have also other sound the S3 and S4 they are very soft and this is correspond to the blood flow into the ventricle and the atrial uh, contractions and the heart murmur sound is produced by a regurgitation through the valve. So what uh, we record uh, by this uh, phonocardio, uh, phonocardiography, uh, we record the sound uh, created by the closure of the uh, and opening of the heart valve and the blood flow. So we hear like loop. Pop, dop, loop, then silence, dop, loop, little silence, dop. So uh, let's look at it like the sound S S1 correspond to the atraventricular valve closing, and the S2 similar, uh, semilinear valve closing. So those valves are up for uh, the sound made of heart during the cardiac. Uh, 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 cardiac um, uh, cycle. And this correspond uh, <clears throat> to the ventricle and the atrial, um, uh, to the produced by the, sorry, by the valve uh, uh, closing. So, <clears throat> So we have the S1, S2, S3, S4. And uh, when the heart is, you hear like a murmur that is a complete closer of the AV uh, valve, atrioventricular valve. What is the cardiac muscles and output? Is the <clears throat> it corresponds to the stroke volume? Uh, stroke volume, which is uh, the end of diastolic volume minus the end of systolic volume that we see earlier during the mechanical uh, events of the cardiac cycle, uh, mitigated by the heart uh, heart rate. And this, uh, of course, as I said, um, this depends on the heartbeat, depend on a lot of factors, such as the age, for example, fetus, when I had my baby, when I was pregnant with my girl um, at the doctor's office, when the doctor listens to um, Kirli, her name, Kirli's uh, heartbeat, it, it getting very faster, up to 160 uh, 
uh, read per minute. Um, so, and this declines with the age. Uh, the heartbeat also depends on if you are a sportive or not sportive, on the body temperature, when the temperature will rise, the heartbeat will rise, but also on other neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, um, uh, I mean, slow, um, Acetylcholine slow actually the heartbeat because um, I, I'm just verifying that I post that as a question actually in the quiz uh, because it opened the potassium channels uh, in the SA node and um, in SA node cells and uh, causes the pacemaker of the pot uh, pacemaker potential to depolarize more uh, slowly. So uh, yeah, I hope that this is helpful and uh, you, we can, uh, I am here to answer any of your questions. We can set up a conference uh, meeting to our uh, uh, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. And uh, hopefully I will see you for the next uh, chapters. Thank you so much.